Welcome back. Now, that Lanzarote you've just seen has often had a big effect on the betting and on the race, of course, for the Tote Gold Trophy at Newbury in three weeks' time, one of the big betting heats of the whole season. Great salute two years ago, one here at 9-4 to four favourite, and then floored Vicario de Bray. You remember they bet 7-4 to four on Vicario de Bray at Newbury. Well, if you think that star season's going to do it, all the three firms, Hills, Corals and Labrits, go 16-1 to one star season. Nine stone, one in the handicap. It goes up £7 with the penalty, nine stone, eight. So the weights will have to rise to make it to put him into the handicap proper. And if you think the runner-up Badracani will win, well, it's a very good race this used to be for losers at Kempton to go and win at Newbury. Deep sensation only last year, of course, was third to Laplau and then went and won at Newbury. Indianapolis in 73. And you remember those great tote gold trophies used to be the Schweppes, of course, at Newbury in the 60s, like Persian War, Hill House, the Vermontois and Elan, beaten controversially at Kempton, went on to win at Newbury. Well, it's 25 to 1 against Badracani joining into that. The best price you can get the favourite honest word of Martin Pipes is 5 to 1. That's with Ladbrokes. The other firms go 10 to 1 bar, the one bringing in the Ascot winner last week, Olverston. The Ladbrokes do go 7 to 1 Olverston. I don't think that 10 to 1 is going to last very, very much longer. It's 12 to 1 bar, the two. And the very early show here is 5 to 2 against Mr. Entertainer. It's now an 11 to 4 chance. Mr. Entertainer, the day's steamer, that bold lament, is a 7 to 2 chance. Bold lament. That's the day's steamer. Bold lament. But it's going to be challenging for favouritism. Mr. Entertainer, 11 to 4. Early doors again. Interesting. I thought that winner paid a handsome compliment to Olverston from David Barron's stable. I think he's going to take all the beating in next month's tote gold trophy. Well, there's uh, lots of people here today, as always on uh, Lanzarote Day, and it's interesting to see some children here as well. And it's always difficult if you've got children bringing them to the race course, trying to hang on to them. And uh, we thought we'd take a closer look at what facilities there are for children at Britain's race courses. And I'm glad to say at Kempton today, they introduced a new creche. And down in the silver ring at the back of the main grandstand, they've built a purpose-built creche. And just inside there, talking to the children, is John Oxy. John? Derek, it's well known to be fatal to appear with children or with pretty girls. Lucy, this is all your fault. Lucy <laughs> Kane, the assistant manager of Kempton. Now, what sort of gave you this wonderful idea? Well, there was a lot of um, parents coming, and obviously the children would buy them, and it's just something for the children to do. Because obviously mm -hmm. they'll get some bored and not very much to do. So we thought mm -hmm. we'd sort of do this and uh, put somewhere to go. So now here we are down in the silver ring, yes. all these wonderful facilities. Now, yep. now, do they have to pay for this? No, it's completely free, and it's open every race meeting. Wonderful. When did you start? It started on Boxing Day. It's open on Boxing Day, yeah. And were you pretty well patronised straight away? Um, yes, there was about so 16 children on Boxing Day, which was very good. We were very and surprised. No, no a good no, deal more. Yeah, a lot more, yes. <laughs> Tell us, who, who does the looking after? Um, Sue does the looking after. She supervises. Sue, Sue Liptrot, hello. 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 Well, must, be, must be quite a responsibility. It is quite a responsibility, but I've got very good staff and I feel that we've got a good system that we make a note of the parents' names and where they'll be. So if a child is upset, we do send for them to come back. And uh, so far we've had very few children that need to be, parents who need to come back for their children. Great, I don't wonder, they enjoy themselves. <laughs> so, so what facilities do you, do, you, do you offer? For instance, what about food? Uh, well, the only food we're given is biscuits and drinks. But if a mother's got a baby who needs feeding, then they can come in here and use the facilities, rather than have to be in the cafe and change children on their lap. Or if they just want to sort of um, give them a drink, that's perfectly fine by us. And as an experienced nappy changer, I must ask whether <laughs> you have facilities for that. Yes, we do, yes. We've got nappies and changing mats in there, so we're very well equipped, yes. Um, well, I think the happiness is absolutely evident. Let's uh, talk to a couple of satisfied customers. Mr and Mrs Lee, if you would come over. <laughs> Hello, and Tom. <laughs> Particularly Tom. But uh, what do you think of it? I think it's first class and it makes all the difference to people to be able to come racing and deposit the child who uh, seems to be enjoying himself very much indeed. This is the first time you've be been, Mrs Lee, is it? It is indeed. I would say that he, <laughs> this is the ultimate rocking horse winner. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Tom? You like it? <laughs> I want to play, he says. <laughs> Off you go. How, where, where, where do you live? How far have you come Holland from? Holland Park, just ten miles. Uh-huh. 
And, and um, so you, you, you'll be back with Tom? We will indeed, Hopefully. yes. I mean, our hearts sank when we saw all the steps when we got to the grandstand. You know, it's impossible with a push chair, but now mm. it's fantastic. We'll have a lovely day. Oh. So thank you very One, much. Wonderful. Well, I think that Mr and Mrs Lee are very typical of an awful lot of uh, parents at Kempton. And uh, I must say, I hope that uh, this happy sight here will be taken as a sign by one or two other racecourse uh, managements. But uh, as we say goodbye to the kids, let's hear from Tomo how other racecourses do operate in this regard. Well, we've done some research, John, into children's facilities at Britain's 59 racecourses, and to be brutally honest, they don't fare very well. Indeed, only two other courses, apart from Kempton, have supervised crashes, and they, as you can see, are at Ascot and Goodwood. Courses with facilities for bigger children are a bit better, for nine tracks have supervised playgrounds, and once again they include Ascot and Goodwood, and these are where there's someone to look after the children. Six tracks have unsupervised playgrounds, but I always find with these that uh, either mum or dad has to keep an eye on them, and you can't really leave them alone. The good news is that during our research, we've found that 11 racecourses have plans to install children's facilities, but the bad news is that no fewer than 34 tracks have no plans to install permanent children's facilities. And when you look at these tracks, you'll see that they include some of the busiest and biggest racecourses in the land. And you know, as a father myself of two right scallywags called Alex and James, I can tell you that trying to come racing as a family can be very difficult indeed, especially when there's a big race. I must tell you that when I visited Leopardstown in Ireland last Saturday, there was a fantastic supervised play area, and a mate of mine who'd flown across for the day took his two young children with him and was able to enjoy the racing because there was a supervised playground area, and that meant that he and his wife could enjoy the day's racing and just like the kids can enjoy their day out as well. Now, back with the serious business for you mums and dads out there, let's recap the picture puzzle. There's still a chance to enter. Take a close look at this Paul Hardman cartoon. There it is. And can you work out the name of that horse? There's still time. 0898 double nine double one double four. 0898 double nine double one, double four, and we'll announce the three lucky winners live here on Channel 4 Racing right after the next race. Well, I come racing a lot and it takes a fair bit to shock me, and I'm always saying to you, come racing, but the news that only three tracks have got a crash is absolutely staggering. I just cannot believe it when I was told, and it's an absolute shame. We're saying come racing, want the families to come, as they do in America especially. You see lots of kids, the playgrounds, every track in America wouldn't dream of doing without it. Why on earth? There's not a small amount of money isn't laid out, and when we say come racing, we mean that you, with your family, should come racing. I'm really shocked at those statistics. The Racecourse Association do something about it quick. We won't drop this on Channel 4. Now, the betting here against Mr Entertainer is Burlington Bertie, 100 to 30, Mr Entertainer, with a day's team of Bold Lament in at 7 to 2, 11 to 2 against Gold Options, and it's then 13 to 2, Farmley Boy, 8 to 1 bar, Bold Lament, the steamer, challenging the favouritism, Mr Entertainer now. Ne News just in, Bowl Lament, £2 over Richard Dunwoody on the steamer. But now let's get up to date with the Channel 4 Champion Tipster competition. Let's first of all take a check on how the leaderboard looks at the moment for January. Here it is, and we've got no fewer, would you believe, than 14 people who all picked all four winners. Incredible on the opening day. There they are, Mr Arnold from the Isle of Wight, Mr Britcher from Norwich, Mr Brown from Dover, Mr Burdis from Berry, Mr Butler from Stoke-on-Trent, Mr Dixon from May Head and Mrs. Duckers from Stafford. We've also got some more who, for that one pound stake, show a profit of £13.23. Mr. Elliot from Bromley, Mrs. Murray from Walsall in the Midlands, Mr. Patterson from Newcastle in the Northeast, Mr. Cheatham from Burnley, Mrs. Townsend from Oxford, Mr. Tucker from Cambridge, and a man from north of the border, Mr. Wilson from Edinburgh in Scotland. And if you'd like to enter next month's competition, well, now is the time to do it. And this is how you do it. Basically, you dial this number, 0898 991147.
and it's based on Channel 4's Saturday's races during February. You'll be allowed one selection per race, and each carries a mythical one-pound win stake. And whoever shows the biggest profit wins that lovely solid silver rose bowl at the end of February. The competition starts on the 2nd of February, but to uh, get in on that competition, you've got to ring 0898 991147. And when you ring that, have a pencil and paper handy, because you will be given a pin number, and you will need that number to enter the February competition for the Channel 4 Champion Tipster. Now, I wonder how you're getting on with your selections in our four races today. As you can see, they're cantering down for our last live race. It's the 240, the Fullwell Handicap Chase, two and a half miles. A real good, open, competitive handicap. Old Bow Ranger heads the weights. Let's have the full list from Gigi. Open indeed. They've won 82 races and over £370,000 in winner place prize money. Kevin Mooney rides Bow Range today. Mark Dwyer on the blinkered course winner gold options. Number three, Edinal Bolas, is a man of Alan Webb. Number four, Mr. Point by Graham McCourt. Number five, Mr. Entertainer by Brendan Powell. Number six, Raise an Argument, Jamie Osborne. Seven, Breakfast Car, Huel Davis. Eight, Fred the Tread, now ridden by John White. And the improving number nine, Farmley Boy by Richard Guest. Number ten, The Nigel Stan, ridden by Mark Perrett. Number 11, Bold Lament by Richard Dunwoody. And number 12, Zomrazet by Simon Earle. 12, 12 runner lineup for this two and a half mile chase. And if I can say, if I can say Zomrazet without saying oar, oar during the running of the race, I should be very surprised. But uh, I've been told that here's the bet in. <laughs> ah, thank you indeed, GG. Bold Lament and Mr. Entertainer are the 7 to 2 joint favourites. Gold options at 6 to 1, and Farmley Boy a 7 to 1 chance open up at 6s. The Nigel stands steady on 8 to 1, and Breakfast Car is 10 to 1 from 8s. Another Bolus and Mr. Point both at 14s. Poe Ranger and Zamaset both on 20s. Raise an argument 25 to 1, and Fred the Treads the outsider at 50 to 1, or quoting. Well, plenty of possible contenders here, but a horse that commands plenty of respect is this one. This is Gold Options, who travels down from Jimmy Fitzgerald's Yorkshire stable, and on his last visit here, just before Christmas, showed his rivals a clean pair of heels. And they've got two to jump, and Catabatic's getting closer, but Gold Options has it, but only by length. To Catabatic in second, there goes Cuddy Dale. Now it's Gold Options on the left, and he has to be ridden. And Catabatic on the right's a winning horse. And they come down towards the final fence. Gold Options and Catabatic, nothing to choose between them. Gold Options by length, jumps it better than Catabatic, and Gold Options gets away from it. But Catabatic is staying on again as he race up towards the line. Gold Options and Catabatic, Gold Options holds Catabatic. Gold Options is the winner. Good performance that by Gold Options because the second has come out and run well at Asker. But here's another possible. This is number nine, Farmley Boy. He's in great form this season, having won four of his last five races. He's equally affected over two and a half and stays three miles well, as he showed here at the Rank Festival over Christmas. And it's one more night, and the Nigel just done getting reminders, and Foyle Fisherman of Farmley Boy on the outside. Three out here, and the night. <laughs> Another victory for you, who The Nigel just done hit it very hard, and it's one more night with a hoop Steve jacket, but Farmley Boy is travelling well, and so too Foyle Fisherman. And they're over the second from home, and one more night of Farmley Boy, and Foyle Fisherman of Foo's Lady tries to get back as they come down towards the final fence. And it's Farmley Boy leading. Farmley Boy from one more night at the final fence. Farmley Boy has it, a bold lead from him. One more night, Bennett running, didn't jump it well, but gets reserves on the run in. And Farmley Boy on one more night, back to fit for far in third. And at the line, it's going to be Farmley Boy who wins it. Farmley Boy the winner. <clears throat> and there's uh, Richard Dunwoody on bold lament. Trained by Nicky Henderson, he's only had one run this season and uh, very, very nearly uh, made all the running at Chepstow. Just uh, got caught in the nick of time by Romney King, but uh, he didn't jump all that straight at Chepstow. This uh, right-hand course might suit him a bit better. Yeah, they were a long way clear at the third horse, the, him himself and Romney King. Romney King came out and won again last week at Warwick, and anybody wondering why Richard Dunwoody just stood up there, then he's just making sure that when he begins riding that his irons are uh, level. Nothing worse. What's interesting is one trainer will put a saddle on one way and another one will put it on the other way, and just a little bit of difference uh, upsets the balance of the irons, and sometimes you have to make a few adjustments, otherwise it'll make one leg ache a little bit more than the other. That's bold lament. Let's get on, because it won't be long before they're underway. 
and we can uh, we have a quick look at Mr. Entertainer, one of the two greys in the race. Lovely horse, this, and he was so impressive, this horse, when he won at Newbury last month. Had a long way back to Nottingham, Gweeth and Auntie Dot, and he's obviously a very good horse. Started off being second to Brandiston at Chepstow. He's got an outstanding chance, but it's one of the most interesting races we've had on Channel 4 this season, and I'm sure there'll be a few there going to the last with a chance, Graham. And, uh, Give you a little bit of trouble calling them out, I should think. Indeed, John, I think it's a very competitive race indeed. And a three to one Mr. Entertainer, although he's an improving horse, doesn't represent value in my book. Bold lament at four to one gold options, five to one, seven to one bar. And I should be surprised if one of the bar horses doesn't uh, pose a major threat in the closing stages of this full well handicap because they've won 82 races between them and over £378,000 in winning place prize money and now they've got 17 fences to jump and the horse with the most money is on the extreme left and that's Bold Lament he's up with the pace early on but so too is Mr Entertainer and uh, Burr Ranger who knows his way around this track exceptionally well and it's Burr Ranger the old boy who leads Burr Ranger by length to Mr Entertainer seconds Zumrazet is third and then Bold Lament is four and then Breakfast Car five and raise an argument six and they're all over that one and the back marker is uh, Mr Point another bonus is also at the back door and they come down towards the third and it's Bow Ranger really stretching the field if he keeps this up I should be surprised but uh, Bold Lament is going with him and Richard Dunwoody is raising the game already and they've only jumped uh, three fences and it's Bold Lament and Bow Ranger taking each other on as they take the fourth fence and they're clear by five lengths to uh, Mr Entertainer showing third and raise an argument four and breakfast car five and Zuma Zets in sixth place and and behind that one is uh, Gold Options, and behind Gold Options is Farmley Boy, with Mr. Point, Fred the Tread, and another bonus, the back markers, and they start the turn in, and they've gone through half a mile already as they uh, pass the two-mile gate, and it's Bold Lament who leads. Bold Lament and Bow Ranger stride for stride as they come into it. Bold Lament and Bow Ranger, and Bow Ranger touched down ahead there. Mr. Entertainer's in third, and they've all jumped that one. That was the fifth. Down to the sixth, and it's Bow Ranger, the leader, with Bold Lament, stride for stride at it, and little to choose between the two. Mr. Entertainer, third, and breakfast car, four. And then uh, raise an argument in five and gold option six and farmly boy seven and why the Nigel stand shows in eighth place now and Zumrazet's in ninth and they take what will be the last next time round and Bow Ranger got uh, no higher than half an inch off the ground but he got through it another bonus made a mistake at the rear of the field and so the order as they pass us with a circuit to go is a bold lament leads by length the pace now more gentlemanly Mr Entertainer second Bow Ranger is third and then breakfast car four and uh, gold option travelling well five raise an argument is six a gap of two lengths to Zumrazet on the inside of Farmley Boy uh, three back to Mr Point and then the Nigel stand five back to another bonus and three back to Fred the Tread who's last as they take the water jump and it's Bold Lament the leader another bonus a slight mistake out the back another plain fence before they take the next ditch and Bold Lament with Mr Entertainer Y. Bold Lament, the leader, joined by Mr Entertainer as they take that one. At the rear of the field, Zomrazet made a mistake and Fred the Tread is the back marker and they take uh, the second last ditch. And it's Mr Entertainer who's wide of Bold Lament and Zomrazet's being pulled up, so he's out of, out of it. And Fred the Tread is the back marker and they swing right-handed to go into the back straight. And it's Bold Lament who leads by length to Mr Entertainer and they're clear by six to eight to breakfast car and raise an argument and gold options and farmly boy a gap of five lengths into mr point three to bow ranger who is showing that he's a light of other days he couldn't live with that suicidal early pace early on but bold lament tries to and he's uh, still keeping there with mr entertainer as they head down towards the 11th Bold Lament in the red. Mr. Entertainer the grey on the right as they come in to take it. And it's Mr. Entertainer who rise in the lead. By length to Bold Lament who jumped in particularly well. Gains ground in the air. At the rear of the field another bonus. And Fred the Tread the old timer at the back. This is, a, this is the last ditch. And as they come into it, Mr. Entertainer and Bold Lament and Bold Lament the better jump. Gold options getting closer with every stride. So too is Farmley Boy. Another bonus pulled up. Fred the Tread pulled up. And they've got five to jump. Mr. Entertainer, the three to one favourite, Bold Lament at four to one, and it's Mr. Entertainer, the favourite, who leads there by length, too. Bold Lament in second. 
And then a length and a half back to Gold Options, who's getting closer, and Farmley Boy gets closer too, as Mr. Entertainer boldly jumps the fourth from home, goes on by two lengths now, to Bold Lament in second, and Gold Options goes after him, and Gold Options looks the danger now to Mr. Entertainer. Bold Lament's being passed by Gold Options as they start the turn in with three to jump in this full well chase. Don't rule out Farmley Boy, he's fourth at this stage, and getting a little bit closer to the leaders, a gap of three lengths then uh, to a breakfast car on the outside of Mr. Point who's starting to stay on and it's gold options going as well as any and they've got three to jump and it's gold options in the blue and white the blinkered runner comes to take it and Mr. Entertainer uh, turns base over apex and hands, handles uh, no favours to Mr. Point and they've got two to jump but it's gold options who comes to take this two out gold options is over clear by two two farmly boy in second and bold lament third and they've got one to jump and it's gold options of course winner here and he's coming clear by five lengths to Farmley Boy, the improving horse, as they take the last, and Gold Options comes to it. He's tired, Farmley Boy's after it. They're six clear of Bold Lament, and then Breakfast Car, and Gold Options is keeping up the gallop, and Farmley Boy is closing with every stride, but Gold Options is getting a hang on at the line. Gold Options is the winner, Farmley Boy in second. Bold Lament is third, and behind these uh, came Breakfast Car in four, a gap to Mr Point, who was closing when hampered three out, and then the Nigel stand and the only other one to finish was raised an argument. And so the result of this full well chase, it's a win for number two, gold options in the colours of uh, Mr. Jay McGarkey, trained at Moulton by Fitzy, Jimmy Fitzgerald, and ridden by Mark Dwyer, his 52nd winner of the season. Second is number nine, Farmley Boy, the mount of Richard Guest, and the third horse home was number 11, Bold Lament, Richard Dunwoody. And uh, two casualties then at the third from home. One must have been Bow Ranger, because that's Kevin Mooney going back. And there also is uh, Brendan Powell on Mr. Entertainer. And it uh, looks as if uh, the ambulance is being called, and the horse ambulance is being called uh, for those two down there at that third from home. Oh dear, oh dear, a tremendous race this. It gave promise to be a tremendous race as they come into the straight with gold options just ahead of Mr. Entertainer and a bold lament gaining on the inside. Uh, but it's here at the third last that Mr. Entertainer just sort of paddles the way, paddles his way through it. Very, very nearly must have knocked Richard Dunwoody off bold lament. Uh, but poor Brendan Powell gets a horrible fall and uh, uh, what had looked such a bright day for Nick Gaisley ends uh, sadly. Gold Options left in front, John, but he's getting pretty tired. He is. <laughs> Luckily, Mr Entertainer was OK, both himself and Brendan had horrible falls there. It was one of those things you try and get a good jump and it keeps you in the race. And if you uh, take your time, then you're out of it. He did what he thought he had to do. Gold Options, though, he, He's came there running away and he's made Mark Dwyer earn his money because he popped over the last. Mark's had a quick look over his shoulder. Farmley boy Richard Guest were in a lovely race on this horse. He's riding really well at the moment. Had three at Warwick last week. And uh, gold options, Mark Dwyer keeping him going right the way to the line. And uh, I should think that he's a little bit of an old character, gold options, but he's won both of his last races, living up to some of his... Uh, The full SP, two gold options, five to one, nine, family boy, seven to one, 11, bold lament at four to one. Number five, Mr. Entertainer was three to one favorite and 12 ran. Lingfield, 230, first number three, Rapporteur, nine to two, eight, Super Morning, nine to two, 12, Scottini, 25 to one. Number two, Tempering, four to one favorite, 12 ran. Tell you what, we're talking about families in racing today. Seamus McGaughy, who came over at Christmas and won the big race over Christmas, has got seven kids in Ireland. He's brought five of them over, and he's still got... He's lost one. He's only got four. But I'll leave him to do that. Anyway, now let's get up to date with the winners from Kempton. The 110 won by number three, General James, 11 to 1. The 140 by number 13, Light Dancer, at 7 to 1. And the 210 went to number eight, Star Season, at 9 to 2. The 240 was won by number two, Gold Options, returned at 5 to 1.
And at Lingfield Park, the one o'clock has won by number three, No React Julian, the nine to four on favourite. Now the 130 went to number two Toshiba Comet, even money favourite. And the two o'clock to number four, Pesadanamaker at two to one. The 230 won by number three rapporteur, nine to two. Right. That was the picture puzzle. Did you get it right? The answer was, of course, Yeoman Cricketer. Yeoman Cricketer and the winners were who each receive £100 all picked at random by the computer Yeoman Cricketer, yep we've got that come on let's find out, it was Mr Beddington from Ashton under Lyme in Staffordshire, well done, Mr Dew from East Ham in London and Mr Jones from Hollyhead in North Wales, congratulations to you three, you win £100 each and we'll have another picture puzzle for you shortly here on Channel 4 in fact let's look ahead to what we've got on offer here on Channel 4 in the next few weeks. It's a busy and exciting schedule. Next Saturday, the William Hill Golden Spurs live from Doncaster. Always a real good handicap. Then after that, Desert Orchid at Sandown in the Agford Diamond Chase. Then to the northeast to Newcastle in February and live racing from Leopardstown featuring the Tote Ida Chase, the Hennessy Cognac Gold uh, Cup, and then back here at Kempton Park for the Racing Post Chase. And after that, we're at Sandown for the Imperial Cup. A new Toxida. That's a new date. The Ansels. Midlands Grand National live from Utoxter on March the 16th. Richard Dunwoody still hasn't ridden a winner this season. He finished second in the big race behind Nicky Mann on star season and he lost his claim on winning this. From us all at Kempton, bye-bye. <laughs>of Sean McGee's two books, the Channel 4 book of the racing year, priced at £16.99, and the Channel 4 book of racing, priced at £9.99. They're both available from bookshops. Just two